So, hi everybody, and hi. Hello. So, how many of you are ready to write authentic contents that your audience will love? Woo! Woo! Everybody's hand should be up. Woo! Okay, that's great. So you may be wondering, so why are two kids speaking at WordCamp? Well, that's because we've been passionate bloggers for a very long time. I'm going to tell you a story. So when I was five years old, I went up to my mommy, she's right there, and I told her, I want a dot com. And I was five years old, of course, so what I meant was I wanted a website, because my mommy is an award-winning blogger. So, we start, Alicia and I started our blogs at five and six years old, and right now we have a blog called holyart.com, where we love to blog every day. So, at first we were a, a, stat, um, a static website, and we were not self-hosted, and then we got introduced to WordPress, and we've been doing WordPress since about 2012, and we loved it ever since. We have spoken at WordCamp BFW as well, so we're very excited to be speaking today. And we have a lot to learn about, so let's dive in and get started, and we're, we're just really excited to be here with you. So before we do, we'd like to thank you for showing up and giving us your time and your attention. So we'd like, um, someone wise once said, sometimes showing up is half the battle and you guys have done that, so please stand up and give, your, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> so how many of you know what authenticity means? Okay, great, I see a few of you, and right now I'm gonna share our definition of authenticity, which is being unique, it's being distinguished, and being genuine. And the number one thing that you need to figure out is what makes you distinguished and what makes you unique from all the other people out there. And this is why um, it's very important to be authentic. So when you're authentic, it means you can be the go-to expert in your field. People will look up to you, you'll have connection with your readers, and you'll find your audience as well. And also, your readers and your audience will be more willing to listen to you and to eventually do business with you. So how great is that? So let's get started. And these are the three steps that we have used in our business and in our blog to create content that our audience loves and that has made us successful bloggers. So number one is to share your stories. And how many of you have heard of Brene Brown? Okay, well, homework for you guys. Go, go home and search for Brene Brown on YouTube. She has a wonderful TED Talk. And this is a quote by her. It's, Share, owning our story can be hard, but not nearly as difficult as spending our lives running from it. So basically, what I think that means is that each story counts. Embarrassing stories, stories that make us sad, and even happy stories, they all count and they all contribute to building trust with our audience. So here are a few ways you can share your story. Number one is to choose stories that reflect why you do what you do. Why are you passionate about what you do? And number two is to do a brain dump to add, to add the specific details and information. And number three is to modify, edit, and clarify the main message. Make sure you really get that out to your readers and to Make sure you elicit emotion and bring out those emotions and make sure that other people can feel connection to you. So I could share the story, for example, of how through us writing our book, I Love Me, we've gotten many opportunities to go speak on different stages and even be interviewed on TV. But the most important story and the main message that I, would, that I really love to share is the reason why we wrote this book is because I was bullied in elementary school. And I'm really passionate about sharing that story with kids because I want them to know that they are loved and they are special and I want them to have self-esteem. So I'd like to share a acronym that my sister and I made up. It's called FOB, Frank, Open, and Vulnerable.
and those are things that will help you connect with your audience when you're telling your story. So, a man named Franz Kafka said, don't bend, don't water it down, don't try to make it logical, don't edit your own soul according to the fashion. So, this quote to me sounds reasonable and logical to all of us, I'm sure you could agree. But oftentimes when I'm writing, I find myself second-guessing myself and thinking, am I just some crazy 12-year-old who is writing nonsense on her blog that nobody wants to hear? But then I realize that people out there really do need to hear my message and that I can actually help them. And you can too. So it's important to share all of your story, even the most embarrassing parts to you, or even the most heartfelt parts to you, because sometimes those are the parts that people need to hear the most. And you need to express your emotions because most of the time when people think that you're vulnerable about your emotions, they think that you're weak, but you, that's actually what makes you strong. So that brings us to tip number two, which is to remember that you bring value. I believe that each of us are beings of eternal potential. We each have something that we were meant to put on this planet and each of us bring a gift to this world. So we need to know that for ourselves. So I want you to stand up, stand up everybody, come on. We gotta get the tiredness out, get some energy going and repeat after us. I have knowledge. I have knowledge. Wisdom. Wisdom. And expertise. And expertise. That others need to hear. That others need to hear. Woo! 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 So it only takes one post, one share, and one opinion to make a difference in this world. And number three, which I think is one of the most important ones, is to ignore the critics. And I know we all like to receive what I call the triple A, appreciation, applause, and admiration. And there will be doubters out there. I can't guarantee that there won't be. There will always be people who will try to put you down and use their negativity to try to shut you out and prevent you from sharing your message. But we need to remember to respond calmly to those doubters and to not let them boss you around. And I have a story actually um, I am part of a Women's Speakers Association with my mom, and I was doing Pinterest graphics for them. So I posted a quote graphic on Pinterest, on my Pinterest board, and then someone commented back that it looked horrible, and basically they were offering their services to the company. So I felt shattered, basically, and I went and cried to my mom, and I... I just didn't know what I was gonna do. But she told me to calm down, to know that I did my best, and to know that I, that it's truly my opinion that counts in things. And another thing that's important is to avoid comparing, because sometimes we can be our biggest critics, and we can be our biggest judge, judgers in, in the work that we do. So avoid comparing yourself to someone else, your definition of success is not someone else's definition of success. So that brings us to the end of the three things that can make your blog successful and authentic. But before you leave, I'd like to let you know that even though you may be taking physical notes or mental notes, the most important part is that you implement those notes and take action in your own lives. So, any questions? Well, we like to tell people that we already are what we want to be when we grow up. <laughs> any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Well, we just want to let you know that we appreciate you and we really, really love you coming here to spend your time to learn. And we, yeah? Okay. And we want to let you know that we really appreciate you coming here and 
we hope that you have a good time here at WordCamp Miami. No? Yes, that's our blog, and we blog about positive values for kids and self-esteem, like I mentioned earlier with my story. And we, we are also artists. We draw and paint, and we teach positive values like fairness and kindness and self-love to other children. So we, we invite you to, to subscribe to our blog and to share our message with other teens and kids that you love and that are in your life. Our book is about self-esteem for kids. It's I Love Me, Self-Esteem in Seven Easy Steps. So thank you so much. Oh, okay. Well, is there, are there any other questions about authenticity or about your blog or maybe any critics that you've had? Yeah. Well, we were, well actually we were living here in Florida and I was bullied throughout second and third grade and I, it was about many different things. I'm a Latina so I was bullied about my heritage, bullied about the color of my skin, the way I look. I was really smart and getting A plus grades and I was bullied for that too. So I felt really discouraged and down on myself and I would come home crying many days to my mom and she would try to comfort me. But then it wasn't until I really discovered that I was bullying myself as long, uh, along with other people bullying me that I could really get over that and really shine through. And then I decided to turn that into something positive and to share it with other kids so they could love themselves as well. Any other questions? Yes, and that goes back to what we were saying, that you can make a difference with anything that you do in this world. Oh, any, any other questions? Yeah. Um, no, actually we're published by a New York publisher, so you can find it in bookstores everywhere and on Amazon. So, yeah. Hmm? Okay, well... I also wanted to share a story about vulnerability because it was really difficult myself to cry in front of an audience. I think many of you can relate to that. It's difficult to share your feelings and to be open. So I was at a conference and actually I was going to share a story um, about, well, our biological dad, he left when we were one and two years old. So it was really difficult for me, and I didn't know if I wanted to share it or not. I was going to share about about um, how the thing, how everything in your life is meant for a purpose. And my mom told me that I didn't have to share it if I didn't want to, or that I could just touch on it but not explain the details. And I just decided I I wasn't going to do it. But when I got there, I actually felt motivated that those people needed to hear my message. So I, so I shared the whole story and I cried even in front of them because what I know for a fact is that love casts out all fear and that loving your audience and that love that you know that other people need that message, that can cast away all fear and you can get over the fear of moving forward and the fear of failure and the fear of rejection. Thank you. Well, do you have any more questions? Yeah? Well, I'm 12. I'm 13.
Yeah. Well, our mom is an author as well, so our main inspirations in life have come from her. The idea to start a blog, the idea to start going on YouTube and be on social media and be out there mainly came from her. So actually, I'm going to have Alyssa share her story because she was an author before I was. Okay. So when I was seven years old, I, well, no, before that, so when I was about five, I think, um, I had seen my mom doing her book writing thing, and I really am always inspired by her, so I asked her if I could write my own book, and she said yes. So I wrote a picture book, I illustrated a picture book about following your dreams, because I wanted other children like me to not do what their parents told them to do as a career, but to do what their heart told them to do. So it's called See What I Can Become. And when I asked what I wanted to do for my seventh birthday, I told my mommy that I wanted to publish it. So I did. And so then after that, as time unfolded with my bullying story and really me coming to love myself, then I started to get this feeling, I want to share this with others. And at first I put it off for a while and I thought, no, oh, maybe not. But our mom always encouraging us to go for our dreams, to love ourselves, to dream big, and that we can do anything we want to achieve in this world. That really drove me to the point that I wanted to share that message. And then Alyssa going through that experience with me and helping me come out of the come out of bullying myself. She also wanted to help on, on that and help other kids love themselves and have self-esteem. And we have seven tips to remember that you are loved, to take care of yourself, to choose well, to believe in yourself, to be grateful, to and um, just to be yourself. And those are all important things. And those are things that you should remember for writing a blog. They're, they're important for that too. Well, I don't know what to say to this, but uh, well, sometimes, I don't know, but sometimes when I feel like I want to share a story, but then as Alyssa was saying, we sometimes second guess ourselves. Well, I think it's probably just remembering what we're writing for and remembering who we're writing for, remembering our purpose and our passion. And what if you think back to that defining moment, that moment when you decided to go for it and that moment you decided that you were going to do it and that you were going to dream big and that you were going to overcome your fear, if you think back to that moment, you will feel the inspiration that you need to move forward. Well, I also think that when you're writing a blog, it's important also to give yourself a break sometimes. Because sometimes we overwork ourselves and then our creativity is fried. So sometimes I take a break from it for a little while and then I bounce back and have more inspiration. Yes. Actually, we, we um, look at a magazine called BU Magazine. It's for girls, and it's about self-esteem. We, we read the Highlights Magazine and um, many other social media magazines that our mom has that we look at. We read many inspirational books by Jack Canfield and um, Sean Covey, and we, we love those books. They give us inspiration, and they really give us another in give us more insight on what we need to write about because we all know that that our world is changing as we go through our lives. So that's an important tip too is as you go writing you will find that things change and then you need to go back to research and that's really important to remember that you always have a library and you have Google as well that you can look for everything that you need on there and that sometimes it's just important to go back to the basics and to just read and learn more. Any other questions? 
Well, yeah, we, we try to learn as much as we can. We write our own blog posts. We each blog three times a week. So we have uh, six days going on constantly every week. And we schedule posts. We go on social media. We do our own graphics, graphic design for our social media posts and for our blog posts. But um, if you're talking about like the plugins and all that geeky stuff, you're not? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, does anybody want to share any experience that they may have with writing authentically and maybe share about your audience or a story that you have? We would love to hear that and maybe if you need help with something, um, if you have, yeah? Well, I think I would tell her to believe in herself and I would tell her that she's special and that people out there would like to hear her story and people out there would like to hear her and hear her voice and if you know someone in your life a six-year-old or a, a 13 year old or an 18 year old that needs that has a voice and has a message and has a story I would ask you to tell them for me that I believe in them that I know they can do it thank you I would tell them that the only opinion that really matters in this life is not your parents, is not your friends, but is yours. Because in the end, you are the person who decides what your life is going to turn out as. Well, we we can never say in this life that we get our ideas from ourselves. I highly believe that we all have a higher self and we all need to tap into ourselves sometimes and learn about ourselves. And to you, you have great ideas, I'm sure, already. So I would just tell you, just let your imagination run wild and be yourself and do what you do best and do what you love. Thank you for speaking up. Usually we don't get the, the treat of answering a kid's question. <laughs> Does anybody want to have a question answered? Yes, thank you. Well, I think we can, we can all say that when we were a kid, we all had big dreams. And there comes a point in our lives when we, when we meet someone or someone that tell us that we can't do it or that dream is too big for us. That tells us you can't do that and that that's not what you should be doing. But I think there is power in words and that if you tell someone that they can do it, they can do it. And if you believe you can't do it, then you won't be able to do it. And Henry Ford says that if you believe you can or you can't, you're right. It's your thoughts, your mindset that really matters and your opinion really counts. And no matter what you want to do, it all starts in here. And it all starts in your dream and in your imagination and in what you love.
Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Well, our mom helps us. She obviously is our number one fan and supporter out there. So we, we write posts and we have her review them. She um, sometimes directs us to add a little more emotion in it or to add a little more information like statistics inside it to change something about the infographic that will make it more eye-popping or something like that. And for our book, we got an editor, which I encourage you to do because everybody has a book inside them. And if you have a blog or if you're thinking about starting a blog, then you can write a book as well. If a seven-year-old could publish a book, and if a nine and 10-year-old could write a book and publish it, and you can too, and you can do it. And I know we all have great stories, and we all have stories that define us, and stories that need to be shared with the world. I just want to say, adding on to what she said, that there is no limit to what we can do the sky is the limit, and the sky and beyond, unless we put the limit for ourselves. Okay, well, I would say to parents that I know sometimes we feel limited and sometimes we, we feel like we can't do things, but that really doesn't give us any excuse to make someone else feel like they can't do something. And that if you had a big dream when you were a kid, and even if you're doing that now, or even if you didn't, I invite you to embrace your inner kid inside you, to remember that you had big dreams and that you were a kid once too, and to see that light through other kids, through your kids or through your nieces or nephews or through the kids that you teach, to any kid that you can see how the youngest people sometimes bring out the best in the best in us and how I would just encourage you to believe in in your children and to believe in them and to encourage them and support them as much as you can well my mom has always been there for me so what I would say to the parents in this room is that your kids are a gift and you should treat them that way and I know that I've been blessed to have a mom that does treat me that way. And I'd encourage you to let your kids go for what they want to do because they are a light in this world and they're the next generation and they can make a big difference in this world if you would only let them. Well, I just thought of something that I would like us all to do, so I want you to stand up again. Stand up again. Okay, so let's stretch a little. Okay, now make a big heart. Say, I love me. I, I love, love me. me. Okay, louder, you can do louder. I love, I love me. me. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. Have a beautiful rest of your work camp, and we will, yes, and your life. Enjoy your life.
Live the best you can and live big and dream big.